I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't even have been born. By the laws of probability, my late father, Max, should never have survived the Holocaust, the only member of his family to do so. And it wasn't by happen chance. It wasn't some singular accident. It was miracle after miracle. He, his brother, and their parents, my grandparents, were on the train to Treblinka, a death camp, where they all were murdered, including my grandparents. But my father and his brother jumped off that train. But in order to increase the probability of survival, because there were Nazi sharpshooters on top of the train, they had to jump at night under the cover of darkness and at speed. My uncle didn't make it. My father did. But then he was captured, taken by the Gestapo to a camp, and by some miracle, survived most of the war in that camp. But then in the end, the Nazis wanted to murder all the remaining Jews that were alive, get rid of all the witnesses. So he escaped, again miraculously. And with the help of the Czechokovsky family, wonderful Polish Catholics, who saved my Jewish father, they put him in a pit, a living grave, with just a hole for air. And once a week, they would bring a bottle of water and some potatoes. It's what they had. It was the end of the war. December 1944. And he remained there until the middle of January 1945. Can you imagine those weeks in a grave? Why? I think you'd understand that, for me, it's not a satisfying explanation to say, well, he survived all that so that his kids could get the latest smartphones, have great holidays. It just doesn't satisfy as an answer, does it? And it always goes on in my mind. Why did he survive? Why am I here? For what purpose am I alive? 52 years I've been having this thought. Sorry, I had to say that. Tomorrow's my birthday, so that's the last time I'll say 52. <laughs> and I have a little present for all of you. You've seen these little notepads that were on your chair. And there's a hashtag. I'll tell you about that later. So I'm an entrepreneur. What do I do? I create businesses. One of them I have here is a gemstone business. And no, that's not my next holiday. That's Myanmar. I'm going there on Sunday because we have a project there. And the project is to help the most economically disadvantaged people. Generally, it's women. And we do it by combining Muslims and Buddhists working together. You all have heard about the terrible things going on there with the Rohingya in the north of the country. So just as the Catholic Chichikovskis saved my Jewish father, I use that business, not just the money to train them, but teaching them a skill. So these women are learning gemstone cutting, because we're in the gemstone business. And it's a little bit like teaching them how to fish and then giving them a market to sell their fish, because I connect them to international markets so they can make some decent money with what they're doing. But I haven't always got it right. In fact, quite the opposite. I, I started a business in 2000 called Airfare. It was doing airline catering here in Heathrow. And one day, a man comes to my office asking for charity, for support from the company for a marathon that he's doing, for charity. Fantastic, great course. I just say, of course, no problem. But why is he coming to me? It was fairly trivial. I always gave 10% of the company to charity. And this was a charitable foundation. There was plenty of money there. Why was he coming to me for some trivial amount? And I was a bit bemused, and I asked him, and he said, well, I did go, and I asked the uh, supervisor, and he said, I don't think the company does anything with charity. And he sent me to the human resources department, 
And they looked at each other, bemused. They didn't know. They went then to the finance department. Everyone was bewildered. I don't think there was anything. Finally, I came to see you, he says. And I thought, oh my god, I really screwed up. This is terrible. I'm an entrepreneur. I should know that team building stuff is the lifeblood of successful businesses. If you want to have a business that really motors, you need to get everybody working together. A common vision. We all know that today more than ever. We know 88%, these are staggering statistics, 88% of millennials want to work for companies whose ethos reflects their own. And those people are three times more productive. Fantastic. And I'm an entrepreneur, I should know this. Perhaps I didn't deserve an OB from the Queen for entrepreneurship because this was such a basic stuff that I knew. Why, why shouldn't I tell and share with my employees this thing? Is this some misguided notion of perhaps, you know, don't make a big fuss about it. It's charity. It's for yourself. It doesn't have to be about ego. Don't need to make a big song and dance about it. But what I missed was an amazing opportunity for my staff, people working with me, to have that incredible energy and enthusiasm that comes when you know you're doing something, not just the work that you're doing. Of course, you have to earn a living. We understand that. And yes, shareholders, owners expect to return. But if you go to the office and you know that 10%, as in my case, of your time was doing good stuff, things that you cared about, that fun run, we were supporting the charity anyway. What an amazing, empowering thing it would have been for the staff. I missed that opportunity. I forgot about this. I forgot about sharing that purpose with everyone. And what did I do about it? Well, actually, not very much for a long time. But a few years ago, I started to feel a lot of unease about what was going on, this crisis of capitalism. Look at this. Trust levels plummeting. This is charities, which is certainly better than business. but. Look at the downward graph. Business. Oh, government. Where's government? Oh, yeah. They're like here. And not surprising. I mean, who believes that government has the answers? It's a complete mess. Maybe charity? Possibly. Look what's happening. This is, by the way, not a typo. That is 60% of the people in this country don't have trust in the system. And it's not getting better. Do you guys remember this? Lehman Brothers. Bankers, they invested, not their money, pension fund money, our money, in subprime mortgages, fancy derivative products. They didn't understand it any more than we do. Lost that money. So why should we trust them? Oh, wait, maybe there was an answer. We did think for a while, tech companies, right? Do no evil. Do we believe that now? They take our data. They sell it for enormous profits. They don't pay tax on it. Robots, artificial intelligence. The governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, said in a recent speech, 15.15 million people in this country are going to lose their jobs. That's half the workforce. We don't have a great future to look forward to. If we think things are bad now, they can and will get worse unless we do something about it. So I have a suggestion to make, an idea. And it's not government, and it's not just companies or us, it's charities too. Who here gives to charity? It's Camden. I expected a very generous audience. Not surprising. And who here gives to charity every hour of every day? Not many. Nor me, because it's not natural. But business does engage every hour of every day. So I had an idea. Entrepreneurial giving. I call it EG. EG because, besides that, it's about examples. Examples of people doing well by doing good. Great entrepreneurs, great philanthropists, 
great businesses. Remember the productivity. Remember how many millennials want to work. The best of people want to work for companies with purpose. So we have a, just have a simple idea, a pledge. You click on the website, Entrepreneurial Giving, and it's free. It takes you two minutes. You've got all your accounting advice, legal advice, HMRC approval, all done. All you have to do is click on it and say, I want to give X percent to charity, whichever purpose that you want to embed in your business. But it's not about giving. It's actually more about entrepreneurial success. But it's about embedding that purpose right at the very outset of your entrepreneurial journey. Why? Well, for those of you that are parents, can you imagine if you had children and you said to them, you know what? I want you to do really, really well in school and everything. Work hard. I don't want you to think about anything, not about morality, ethics, no, no, just nose down to the grindstone, just make a success for yourself. And maybe when you're 18 or later, I'm going to sit down with you and talk to you about you know, your role in the world and what you can do. That's not going to work. So why do people and businesses think, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to make tons of money. I'm going to be really ruthless. I'm going to do everything bad. But at the end, I'm going to give money so it'll all be OK. There's an opportunity without giving money that every business has in the things that they do. Recruitment, gender diversity, ethnic mix, supply chain, not buying products from companies that use child labor or thinking about the environment. All these things, these are decisions that companies make each and every day that affect all of us, that affect society. And how does this affect us? How do we interact with that? Simple, we're consumers. We know, by the way, that consumers pay more for products and brands that have purpose. So this is actually about being successful business by doing well by doing good. And it's free. And we have amazing companies that are saying, every company I've asked, I said, would you host a small group, two, three dozen people, to come in an evening and, and share together to create a little community of like-minded entrepreneurs? And they all say yes. Some of the biggest names, companies that you will all know, and entrepreneurs, and educationalists, and philanthropists, all of them say, yeah, we'll come and give an hour of our time to come and talk to these people. Not just here, but in cities around the UK, indeed cities around the world. So that cafe, that new cafe here in Camden, can connect with the cafe in Calgary, in Canada, and with the cafe in Calcutta. It doesn't matter. They're all startup businesses. They all want to make a difference. They want to talk and engage and inspire one another with new ideas, how to be successful, but also how to do good while doing well. So the idea that we have for business translates now to something that I'm going to ask all of you, if you would like to do, a pledge. And why a pledge? Because writing it is proven there's data that shows you are 42% more likely to achieve your goal just by committing it to paper. So I ask you, what is your purpose? What legacy do you want to share? Maybe it's volunteering. Maybe it's going through revolving doors to avoid heat loss or thinking about how we use plastics. Maybe it's reaching out to entrepreneurs who you meet and say, you know, about this community, have you, how do you embed purpose in every day in what you do? Whatever it is that you want to do, to share it with us. So I've put the hashtag here for you to use. If you want to share it with me, I'd love to hear from you guys what you've decided to do, or share it with your friends, share it with your family. All of us together can make a difference. I shouldn't be here. But I am, and I know that at the end of the road, I feel passionately there must be a legacy. There must be something positive that I leave behind. I can't do it alone. Nobody can. Not government, not charity, not business. But all of us together can. So I ask, together, let us make a pledge. 
Together, let us change society. Together, let us be the example. Thank you.